Hey everyone, it's Aussie here with first updates now here at the NTX and Semgals off season with the host 5431 Titan Robotics, third place at Dallas and third place in the Apollo Division at State Championship. Really excited to walk through their robot. They have a really unique arm system with a shoulder, wrist, elbow, everything like a regular arm has. So I'm really excited to walk through their robot. With me, I have Iminol, Addison, and Nat to walk over the robot, and I'm really excited to walk through with you guys here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. All right, Emil, talk me through your design process and any innovations you guys have made throughout the season. So at the very beginning, we kind of just decided to um, go off of what a human arm would do. So obviously you can see here, uh, shoulder, elbow, wrist right here. Um, in the, at Dallas, I believe, we had a much longer arm and we changed it in between Dallas and our second competition to be much shorter. So we weren't uh, reaching out as much and we could push up against the little uh, pieces by the hybrid node and score like that without having to be farther back. Hand it over to Addison to talk about the arm. Now, Addison, talk to me about your arm. It seems that, again, you have a sh shoulder, elbow, wrist. Talk to me about the entire system. Yeah, so um, this arm, obviously, it does have these elements, as you mentioned. Um, so it is dr driven with a 100 to 1 gear ratio on the shoulder on either side. Um, and that shoulder um, allows for that big range of motion, just like your human arm would have. Um, and then we have uh, the elbow, which has the skier ratio here. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but um, that's you know controlling a lot of our back and forth motion um, with the arm. And then uh, that moves on to our wrist, which you know rotates our manipulator. And how helpful has the wrist been to pick up game pieces and stuff like that? Um, it's pretty useful. Now, going back into the straight into the intake from the wrist, basically your hand. Uh, Emil, talk to me about the things you've done with the intake, any changes you've made. So this wrist used to be a lot less compact. It went, it went to about here before. It was really big for what it needed to do. So we shrunk it down a lot by using plates instead of tubes and just doing this kind of thing with a gearbox. This gear ratio is, I want to say 15 to one. So that's what we needed to get the motion we needed. And then right here we have a Neo, just direct driving to this pulley, down to this pulley and making a reduction of, I forget the number, but makes a reduction, so more torque, and then it's lined if you come over here. It goes across, not that way. It goes across, pulley, goes back up, goes back across, and over down here with a twist in the polycord. So they're going opposite directions. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in previous competitions, you guys used to have pneumatics. Explain to me the changes you guys made. No. Um, so in the earlier days of this robot, we had an intake that would kind of clamp on the game pieces. Um, so to do that, we used pneumatic pistons so we could be fast and strong with that uh, actuating motion. But since then, we've switched to a roller intake and found that it's much easier to uh, touch and own it kind of thing. Uh, and pneumatics, the way they had to be placed, they were very fragile and prone to breaking. Now, can we see the this new intake in motion with a cone and game, or cube? Yeah, for sure. Go to high. So is, is the intake automatically stopping or is that just the driver itself? Uh, I believe it stalls. It stalls? Yeah, and then stops. All right, can we see that with the cube? Yeah. A little bit deflated. Oh, yeah. And that's, 
And that's also stalling the motor. Yeah, and then the operator does stop it. All right. But it doesn't. it's not automatic. Now let's hand it over to Nat to talk about the programming. The arm is seems to be swinging a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you guys use in code to so fix it? So in code, we use uh, we use set points. So basically, we get the we use the absolute encoder to find the position of the arm, and then from that, we use set points for the x and y values of the arm. So if I would say go to high, uh, if I would if I if I was gonna go to high, I could just do this, and we, it's a preset like X and Y position that the arm knows to go to. The same, uh, same with other positions like this is for picking up, or this is for placing like on mid, and this is just when we're driving. Uh, so we use preset positions just to make the driver's lives a lot easier, so they don't have to just manually move our arm. Uh, we also use auto balancer, which uh, for Auton, we just when we get onto the charge station, it will run the auto balancer command and it will balance for us. So, I really love your programming system, I assume the swinging is just backlash? It's mechanical backlash, yes. Mechanical backlash. Alright, 5431 Titan Robotics, thank you guys so much for taking the time to walk us through your robot. Really enjoying the, the off-season so far, thank you guys so much for hosting and really excited to see you guys do well in future seasons. Congrats, guys. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.